Hi guys, welcome to Signal Path. Today we're covering what I think is a pretty fun topic because a little while ago I received the poem from the Audio Cultivation Project. And the poem is, if you're not aware, this really, really interesting approach to expression control. Basically what it does is it allows you to plug an instrument into the top, your guitar, synth, whatever. Um, and what it does is it reads your dynamics and outputs an expression control. Uh, you have some kind of controls that we'll talk through for sensitivity, direction, all of those sorts of things, but allows you to basically control an expression output using the dynamics of your playing. Uh, and it got me thinking about this category of pedals that is sort of a effect adjacent pedal. These are pedals that make your pedals do more. Um, the pedals we're talking about today don't do anything sonically per se, but they drive your pedals to be their best self and they make them do kind of really interesting things. Um, expression via dynamics is relatively unexplored to my knowledge. It's kind of this neat uh, expansion uh, that we're seeing in terms of how people are linking functionalities and approaches to their processing and I think that's an exciting thing. But there's a few other pedals that I thought were kind of worth mentioning in this category. Uh, the Old Blood Noise Endeavors Expression Ramper, which is still one of the most compact and robust methods for expression control that I've seen. Just tiny fits on anything. Um, really, really great. Um, the Pedal Brain's Left Brain, another uh, kind of favorite inspiration tool of mine. This uh, really chaotic and uh, detailed but uh, compact approach to wild expression control and, and variation. Uh, something that is really, really fun for ambient and granular and, and so many kinds of uh, effects, effect types that you can control with it. Um, a couple of others uh, in terms of kind of feedback looping the hors d'oeuvre from Fairfield circuitry. Uh, kind of this creative routing approach that allows you to loop a pedal back into itself creatively and destructively and chaotically um, that often just helps dig me out of a, a dry place of, of creativity where it's it forces me to contend with something in a way that I think makes me better as a creator and a producer. Um, on the topic of creative routing, the XO from Great Eastern Effects as well, we'll get into what this thing does. And there are full length videos for many of these pedals on the channel. So you can kind of dive in at your leisure um, into the deeper functionality of what these offer. And I'll link those down below. Uh, but the XO is a crossover that lets you basically place frequency bands in parallel and process them separately. Really, really neat. We don't dive too deep into it today, but uh, something that's worth exploring and, and there's kind of a full deep dive on the channel for that. Um, and then a couple other pieces. It's firmly affixed to the desk at the moment, but the duophony from GFI, I use it every single day to route my amps in parallel and it makes uh, the UA amps significantly more than the sum of their parts. Um, essential if you're using multiple pedals. Uh, for multiple stereo amp pedals for your kind of digital amp rig at this point. And then there's a couple honorable mentions. One that I did a very, very recent video for, uh, the Morningstar MC6 Pro, uh, which is really just kind of the end all in terms of MIDI control and taming large pedal boards and MIDI enabled pedal boards, something that I really, really enjoy, but uh, something that takes a little bit more time to talk through than we have today. So uh, if you're interested in MIDI and diving into that world, I'd recommend you check out that video. Uh, and then kind of finally, uh, in terms of pedals that make your pedals do more, uh, the Old Blood Noise Endeavor Expression Slider, uh, really just a bare bones, very basic uh, replacement for an expression pedal, where if you don't need you know, constant or incredibly tactile control, a useful resource. This basically lives on my pedal steel as a way of controlling my wet effects when I'm using pedal steel. That way I don't have to tap dance. Your feet are usually pretty tied up. Um, simple, effective, but um, yeah, that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. So we'll, we'll dive into how I use some of these and, and what they do in general. But if you enjoy this kind of 
content. It would mean a ton to me if you'd go ahead and like this video. It lets YouTube know to recommend this sort of thing in the future and subscribe to the channel uh, to follow along. There's a lot of really, really exciting content and things that are in the works over the next few months, and I would love to be able to share those with you. Uh, but without much further ado, let's jump into it. All right, let's check out the poem. Like I said before, the poem is this really neat way of controlling expression with the dynamics of your playing. Uh, so to kind of quickly walk through the controls, limit is going to basically choose the sensitivity of that envelope control. Control is basically what is the expression level when the pedal is bypassed. So when we're not using it, um, how does that affect things? And then there is a reverse switch and a ring switch that basically let you make sure your configuration and direction are pointed the right direct the the right way. Uh, the way it's hooked up on the top is your audio in and out. And then down here is your expression out, which is hooked up to the low pass filter expression control on the so high, so low. Uh, so just to kind of show what it, how it works when the, the poem is off. This is what it sounds like without the so high. Now when I move the lower knob of the poem, it's opening up the low pass filter because that's what the expression is connected to. So that basically means, you know, that's your default state, but when we turn this on, So right now the direction is reversed. If I flip the switch, basically what's going to happen is the harder that I play, the more the filter is going to open up. So those kind of harder played notes are going to op be kind of more natural sounding and then quieter, it kind of... setting of the low pass up a little bit, it'll be a little bit more open for us. And if we set this up for just below oscillation, sensitivity down just a hair. So it turns this really neat kind of bandpass filter pedal into something uh, of an auto off. I increase, a, just kind of add a little bit of drive. And so, I mean, without the poem, this is what it, the tone sounds like. And as soon as we introduce that kind of dynamic element again. Now, if we hit the reverse switch, now the filter is actually traveling the other direction. And so the harder I hit, the more closed the filter ends up being, and then as the notes decay, it opens up. D 
decrease the drive a little bit. makes this like kind of cool thing that you can sort of balance with the sensitivity now if i close this up even more on the so high so low and add a little bit more delay and a little bit more reverb That like reverse envelope thing where the the dynamics slowly open that filter kind of turns this into some really really pretty like almost like synth swells. And if I want it to go through all the way, I can just play a little bit quieter. kind of forces you to play really dynamically but it's got these just great kind of feel for like lead stuff the poem like this is what it sounds like with the poem off and back with the poem if we flip the reverse back to normal have really neat dynamics the reverse makes it almost feel like that tape reverse kind of um you know psychedelic thing and this is really neat for just kind of creating nice like just dynamics low it's real dark kind of make notes pop That's the poem. I think it's really, really neat. It, it has just so many uses, but I think filter is a fun way to kind of play with it just because it sort of has so much responsiveness to it. But amazing what a pedal that really stays out of the way doesn't really take up a lot of space or force you to use it. That's one of the nicest things about this is you can park it and then just kick it on for a moment that's really special if you wanted to like make your you know delay run away or something like that when you hit it really hard or really softly there's so many neat uses for this thing and you know if you're interested in uh, using your dynamics differently i think it's really neat <laughs> Is 
Next up, we have the Old Blood Noise Endeavors Expression Ramper. This thing has been out for a while, but I still think that it is one of the most compact and useful ways to get com conventional expression control with a couple of extra tricks. Uh, right now, I have this set to the A, B mode, and basically, all it takes to set this up is basically turn the right toggle to A, select a position, turn the center toggle B, uh, and then choose a position there. And then all you have to do in A to B mode is play, hit the button, and you will travel between those two places. So A was very, very closed. B is a bit more open, and we can actually open that a bit wider. So essentially what the expression ramper kind of in this mode lets you do is almost like save two presets on a pedal that doesn't actually have presets. Say I wanted something kind of a little bit more choked and, and low passed. Kind of nice for certain ambient stuff. it has a couple of other neat modes. So if we flip the left toggle to triangle and this bottom toggle to rate, we have now created basically that ramping that we can now control the speed between those two endpoints. Now for kind of ambient stuff, it's really, really cool. You can create these long, slow kind of transforming spaces by lowering that rate a ton. can turn it in like a kind of a faux tremolo. And then additionally we have a square mo a square wave mode as well. If you want to, you know, have some creative resources uh, in your expression, but then also the 
ability to just kind of choose a couple different presets for your expression. Let's take a look at the pedal brain's left brain. Right now the habit is kind of set for a pitch shifted delay. Simple, pitch shifted down a little bit. When we introduce the expression from the left brain, it sounds like this. And you're hearing the left brain modifying the modify. It's moving this knob around basically automatically. And for pitch shifting and kind of interesting psychedelic effects, it does some really special things. kind of set the center point of what it's modulating around. But then there are a ton of modes and kind of banks and settings that we can use and modify. territory to explore in so many different settings and modes to, to check out but really one of the most interesting approaches and applications uh, of expression control I've seen in the pedal world and it's just it's such a joy to just kind of explore and mess with the different sounds and modes available all right next up we have the hors d'oeuvre from Fairfield circuitry and the fair hors d'oeuvre like I said before is a sort of feedback looper routing box that does some really, really interesting things. But right now it has the instant lo-fi junkie from ZVEX, uh, which is one of my favorite modulation pedals, I think ever. But while this is has our indicator light on, it's because it's in the loop of the order if we can't hear it yet. So this is just the wet signal, no feedback, nothing going on right now. That's what it sounds like. Now we can change the polarity of the wet signal if we want. Let's bring the volume up just a hair. Now we can bring in the dry signal if we want. Make sure we're in phase. gets really fun is we can start 
introducing some feedback. Now for listening to only the dry signal. tone way down. We can flip the polarity of the feedback. Drying a signal again. Now, if we add delay and then just a touch of this, we get this like intriguing weirdness without it dominating our tone. send it only to the compression side of the lo-fi junkie as opposed to the modulation. And put against the dry signal. Kill the feedback entirely. Now it's just a nice mix control. Now we can balance the wet and the dry mix. Fully wet. all together.
All right, let's take a look at the XO from Great Eastern Effects. The XO is this crossover that lets you basically put two pedals in different areas of the frequency spectrum. So I've got the sick owls on uh, kind of one side and the lo-fi on the other. Blended, it kind of sounds like this, and then we can change where that crossover occurs. We can even flip which band gets which pedal. of the two with a lo-fi on the low. If we flip it so that the lo-fi is on top, we kind of get a Burger Records thing going, if that's your flavor. But even if we like just want to restrict a pedal without, if we turn the sick eyes off, now we've just relegated the lo-fi junkie to those top frequencies. And that could be really useful for certain kinds of modulation effects. modulating the lows. full demo on the channel if you're interested in the XO because I think it is a really really neat piece that has a lot to it but if you're interested in manipulating frequencies and how they relate in parallel really really cool approach to getting more looks and styles of sounds out of your pedals all right let's talk about the duophony and how I'm using it on the amp board this might be a familiar setup uh, I have Mark Johnston to thank for really ruining me for many things but among kind of chief among them i think is the parallel processing capabilities of the duophony especially for amps and amp sounds and so basically what i'm doing in the duophony is i'm taking a stereo signal splitting it out to both the dream and the ruby mixing them in parallel and blending them back together at the output to kind of give this weird illusion of like a Fender-y, Voxy stereo image that is somehow more central 
and wider feeling uh, all at the same time, depending on what you put into it. Just to make sure we got our sort of colors straight here. Blue is going to be the dream. Green is going to be the ruby. Let's bring that output up just a hair. And then right down the middle, 50-50 is gonna sound like this. gets really cool is you can then blend each side a little bit differently. With the setting like that, you can kind of get different things highlighted on each side of the spectrum. And you can, if you want on a certain data, just to have these totally separate again, you can do that. a ton of flexibility it's something i use literally every day but uh, if you're someone who wants to kind of move into multiple ua or similar kind of territory uh, for your digital amp setup the duophony is like a must use in my opinion it does so much and it helps immensely with crafting tones that make sense and, and kind of fit the space that you're trying to fill so yeah worth checking out <laughs> 